The first of all, the John's Gospel, chapter 14. John 14, please. The Gospel of John, chapter 14. I want to just read one verse from this chapter. John 14 and verse number 6. Jesus, Jesus speaks to Thomas, and this is what he says to Thomas. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And I want you to mark this evening those two words, no man. And then I want you to come back to John 10, John's Gospel, chapter 10, please. John's Gospel, chapter 10. In verse number 9, the Lord Jesus speaks, and He says, He says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. And I want you to underline the two words there, any man. John 14, verse 6, you've got the no man. John 10 and 9, you've got the any man. And then finally, I want you to turn with me to 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. And verse number 5, Paul writes to Timothy and he says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Underline those two words, the man Christ Jesus. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing to those three verses of Scripture this evening. Three men and their message. Two of them very unfamiliar. Two of, two of these men I hardly have ever looked at, but I'll tell you, each of these two men have their message to tell, and especially the third one. You see, in John chapter 14, and verse number 6, the no man, you know, he has a powerful message. And he paints a powerful picture that sinners need to look at. Because in John 14 and verse number 6 this evening, there you have the inadequate man the inadequate man. Jesus says, No man cometh to the Father but by me. And my dear unsaved friend tonight, you may raise the question, you're calling him the inadequate man, George. Inadequate for what? I'll tell you, inadequate for heaven. You see, unsafe friend tonight, you may be church, you may be good living, you may be this, you may be that, you may be the other thing, but this man in John 14 says, you're inadequate for heaven. And so many of the good people and the upright people and the religious people of the kingdom of Morn would tell me tonight, don't tell me I'm inadequate for heaven. Do you not realize that I am this? Do you not realize that I am that? Do you not realize I am the other thing? I'll tell you what people fail to realize tonight, that they're nothing. In the eyes of God, that is. If you're not saved tonight, you're inadequate. You're inadequate for heaven, you're inadequate to meet God, and you're inadequate for eternity. And it doesn't matter how religious you are, it doesn't matter how upright you are, Jesus says, no man, no man cometh to the Father but by me. Do you know what a whole lot of people believe tonight? A whole lot of people believe. 
And especially, and now I'm talking about the church going people, and I'm talking about the upright people, and I'm talking about this one. People have it in their minds tonight. You know, I'm too good to be lost. I wonder what you believe tonight. Okay, I'm too good to be lost. Don't you tell me that I'm not adequate for heaven. Do you not realize that I am religious? Do you not realize I go to my place of worship? Do you not realize I do believe in God? Listen, love, it takes more than believing in God to be saved. It takes more than going to your church to be in heaven. It takes more than living a good life to be acceptable to God. You're in this meeting tonight and you're not saved. You're inadequate for heaven. You're inadequate to meet God. You're inadequate for death. You're inadequate for eternity. Jesus says, no man. The man in John 14 and verse 6 says, no. The rich young ruler came to Jesus one day and says, good master, what must I do that I may inherit eternal life? And the Lord Jesus laid the ground rules. And the young, rich, young ruler, he thought he was powerful. He says, Lord, all these commandments have I kept from my youth up. But the Lord Jesus says, there's one thing you lack. There's one thing thou lackest. And that young man realized he was inadequate. The big story, the big sad, tragic story today is this. There are sinners who are sincere in their religion, but they're not saved. They're sincere in their religion, but they're not saved. My wonder's at you tonight. They're all focused on their church, but they've no Christ. You see in John 14 and verse 6, you see here tonight the inadequate man. Queen Victoria invited an evangelist by the name of Gypsy Smith to Buckingham Palace. And they sat in the, in the drawing room of Buckingham Palace, Gypsy Smith and Queen Victoria. Their conversation was about the things of God and the things of the Bible. And this is what Queen Victoria said to Gypsy Smith. Gypsy, she says, it took the same grace of God that saved you to save me. Do you know what the Bible says? There's none righteous. No, not one. Do you notice John 14 and 6? You have the inadequate man. No man. Then I wanted you to notice in John's Gospel, chapter 10, verse number 9, because there's another man, and he has a different message. Even though the person in John 14 is the inadequate man, but John 10, 9 speaks of the invited man. You see, the first thing you have to do to be saved, sir, is to believe you're not good enough for heaven, to believe you're a sinner. If you don't believe you're a sinner, you'll never be saved. That's the first truth you have to learn. But in John 10, verse 9, oh, there is the invited man. Jesus says, I am the door by me if any man. Boys, don't you ever limit salvation. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. You know, dear unsaved friend tonight, even though you're inadequate for heaven, you're inadequate for death, you're inadequate to meet God, you're inadequate for eternity, let me, the same message tells you tonight, you're still invited. If any man enters in, he shall be saved. And you know, dear unsaved friend, tonight, you're inadequate, but I'll tell you, you're invited. 
Because the Lord Jesus says, By me, by me, if any man enters in, he shall be saved. I am the door. That's the illustration. By me, if any man enter in, that's invitation, shall be saved. That's salvation. That's salvation tonight. By me, if any man enter in. Listen tonight. There's nobody too far down in the gutters of sin that's not invited. There's nobody far away, not too far away from God that is not invited. There's a sign above heaven's door tonight, and you know what it says, whosoever will may come. Do you know there's a chip shop outside Border Down, and they have a sign. They have a sign outside the door, and do you know what it says? No beggars, no drunks, no ticket sellers allowed. No drunks. No beggars, no ticket sellers allowed. Thank God tonight. There's no sign like that in heaven's door. By me, if any man enters in, shall be saved. There's a big guard. He was a Nazi in the camp of Auschwitz. Many years after the Second World War was over, he attended a gospel meeting where he heard the gospel preached from that text. God convicted him of the terrible things that he did to those Jews those years ago. But that night, he heard that word, by me, if any man. And that big Nazi guard says, if that means any man, that means me. And through the invitation, he came to Christ and was saved that night. You see, John 10 and verse 9, that's the invited man. Listen, you need to learn you're the inadequate person tonight, but you're the invited person. But finally, finally, in 1 Timothy 2 and 5, you don't find there the inadequate man. You don't find there the invited man. You find there tonight the important man. Because you see, there's one mediator between God and men. It's the man, Christ Jesus. No pastor can do what Christ does. No minister can do what Christ does. No priest can do what Christ does. There's only one mediator between God and men, and it's the man, Christ Jesus. Do you know what mediator means? It means to make one righteous. And the Lord Jesus Christ tonight is able to make you righteous in the sight of God. Ah, but for you to do that, you have to repent of your sin. You have to repent of your silly notions that you're good enough, and you have to repent of anything else that you're trusting in and come to Him. He's the only Savior, the man Christ Jesus. You know what I love about the Lord Jesus? The old Pharisees bore a great testimony to him when they said, This man receiveth sinners. Thank God he, this man, receives sinners tonight. He's not only the one who is mediating, he's the one tonight who receives. And Paul said, Through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. He's the one that forgives. There's one mediator between God and men, and it's the man, Christ Jesus. And you go to Calvary's cross tonight, and you'll see what this one man did there for you. Christ Jesus came into the world not to start a religion, not to start a Baptist church. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. To save sinners. And you need to be trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ tonight if you want to be in heaven. You need to be trusting in the Lord Jesus tonight and all that He did for you on the cross to save you from going to hell. 
Last Tuesday, a week ago, a woman told her friend, she says, when I die, I want to have a public wake. I don't want anybody to grieve over me. I want everybody to rejoice in the God of my salvation. She says, I don't want any morbid weeping over my death, she says. She says, I want everybody to know that I'm in heaven with the Lord Jesus. That was Tuesday week ago. Last Friday week ago, that lady was killed by a cow. Her name was Thelma Gorman. It happened in Armagh. Some of you have heard it on the news. Killed by a cow. She was killed trying to protect her husband. The newsletter printed this headline. Farmer ready for eternity. It came... It came from the line of the minister's sermon. They printed the minister's sermon that he said that this lady, Mrs. Gorman, was ready for eternity. She encountered God's salvation. And on Friday afternoon, she went home to be with the Lord. She didn't think when she was talking about her wake on Tuesday that she'd be dead on the Friday. That's how important it is tonight to trust Christ now. Thelma Gordon. Was a woman that was marked by tragedy. In 1975, her uncle was shot by the IRA on on his doorstep. She was the first of the scene. And as she cradled him in his arms and administered first aid, her uncle died in her arms. And last Friday week ago, she too, was called home through a tragedy. I was speaking to a couple at the wedding yesterday, and this is what they said. All down through last week, God has used that tragedy to speak to people. And sometimes God uses a tragedy as a wake-up call for anybody that's not seen. No man cometh to the Father but by me. If any man enters in, he shall be saved. Did you learn this tonight? There's one meteor between God and man. It's the man, Christ Jesus. The inadequate man. No man comes. The invited man. By me, if any man. The important man. The man, Christ Jesus. Don't you miss him tonight. You come tonight. Let's pray. Lord, we realize tonight that through the simplicity of thy truth, we can hear thy voice. And we just, Lord, commend the eternal issues of this meeting to Thee. And we pray, Lord, earnestly pray 
that if there's any in our meeting tonight that's not sealed, they will see themselves tonight as the no man who tries to be saved themselves. And they'll see themselves as the invited one when the Lord Jesus invites them. But they'll see most and above all, Lord, the important man tonight, the man Christ Jesus. For neither is there salvation in any other. There's none other name under heaven given amongst men, whereby we must be saved. O oh God, give deciding grace, we pray. Amen. I'm going to close with him number.